Welcome back, Seth Bling here. For those of you who have played Magicka, it's got a pretty cool spell system, where basically you can queue up a bunch of elements and then cast a spell, and depending on what elements you selected, it'll cast that spell. So these command blocks allow me to do something very similar in Minecraft. So if I press the 2 key, it'll select my second slot, and then I'll, uh, I'll have queued up a bolt spell. So the 2 indicates a bolt spell. Now if I press 5, that'll indicate that I want to queue up fire. If I press 8, that'll indicate I want to queue up air. Uh, 5 is another fire, 8 is another air. So now I've got a bolt spell, and you can see it says bolt when I select it, uh, with 2 fire and 2 air, which is fireball. So it says I cast fireball, and then it lands and uh, an explosion occurs. And I can cast it again, 2, and I want to cast a bolt, 5 fire, 8 air, 5 fire, 8 air, and I can just go ahead and cast the spell again. So basically, you're only limited by how quickly you can uh, type out 25858, uh, and maybe if there's a little bit lag on the computer, <laughs> uh, maybe you're limited by that too, uh, which is happening because there's a lot going on here. So there's a bunch of spells that I programmed in, so 2 uh, to get another bolt spell, 5 is fire, 7 uh, is earth, and then 8 air, 7 is earth, and I can cast this, this is summon creeper, and wherever the... Uh, snowball lands, that's where the creeper's going to appear. Uh, cast another bolt spell, I'm going to use a two dirt and a water, and go ahead and toss that, and that'll summon an iron golem. So, different bolt spells. Now there's other kinds of spells too. So, for instance, uh, if I press three, I'll get a ray spell. And so if I queue up fire with this ray spell, I can cast fire ray. And this is kind of cool. Um, it shoots an arrow, but it also creates this uh, this line of fire along where I've shot. It doesn't do much on short distance, so if I press 3 and then 5, indicating I want to cast a ray spell uh, with fire, like and I, and I shoot it only this far, we're only going to get one piece of fire wherever the, wherever the ray lands. But, um, but over long distances, if I shoot it really far, and let me go ahead and go into creative mode so we can take a look, it, it draws a line of fire across the whole thing, which is pretty cool. And uh, so I've programmed in a couple of different ray spells. And so three, indicating ray, and then uh, six, which is water, is going to cast ice ray. And that'll leave a trail of ice. Uh, and then if I queue up an earth and a fire, it's going to cast magma ray, which, uh, which will drop a bunch of uh, lava. Uh, so then there's one final type of spell, which is splash. And if I press 4, I'll get a, I'll queue up a splash spell. And there's a couple of different ones of those. So if I get uh, 3 air and 2 water, and I throw the splash spell, I'll get invisibility. And as you notice, now I'm invisible. If I go into F5 mode, which is what I'm in now, I'm invisible. Um, F5, come on. <laughs> yeah, so now I'm invisible. Um, by the way, you'll notice that... Uh, I can't place, I'm in adventure mode, so I can't place uh, the fire or anything, uh, or, or the dirt, or, so if I try and right click to place the dirt, it doesn't do anything. That's uh, that's the new adventure mode in, in the 13W, sorry, 14W2C snapshot. Uh, it doesn't let you place any blocks, so even though I have fire in my inventory, I can't actually place it. Uh, there's one last splash spell, and basically that uses one of each element, so I'll queue up splash, and hit 5, 6, 7, 8 for each of the four different elements, and if I s throw that splash spell, I'll get blitz, which lets me run around like crazy for 15 seconds. It also, yeah, gives me jump boost, and pretty cool. So I can cast these spells as much as I want. I kind of like casting fireball because it's kind of cool to be able to throw an explosion like that. I kind of like my grenades, but uh, a little more configurable. So there's a lot of command blocks here, and I probably don't have time to go over all of those. And a lot of you probably won't understand what's going on anyway, but I'll, I'll just go over the gist of it. Uh, how everything kind of works at a high level. Uh, I'm going to turn my volume down a little bit. Just make sure that the uh, sound of this clock doesn't drive you crazy. So this is a redstone block clock. It just uses this command block and um, with a creating a redstone block with this destroy method. And so it's the fastest kind of clock, even though this redstone looks like it's always on. It's actually blinking on and off 20 times a second. And so that's triggering all these things. Now, uh, these guys are checking what your selected slot is. This is a new feature in the snapshot as well. Uh, you can test for a player with uh, 
with a specific selected item slot. So in this case, this one's looking for selected item slot two, which is actually um, the number three. So if I press three, you'll notice this, uh, this comparator comes on. If I press four, it's this one, five, six, seven, and eight is this one. So it's, uh, it's the numbers start at zero just because that's the way things work in programming. So that's how I'm detecting what the player is pressing with their, with their keypad and what number they're using. And then there's some logic over here to clear out uh, one dirt from your inventory and clear out another dirt from your inventory and clear out. So if you, uh, it'll clear out up to three dirt and each dirt it, it clears out will add one to your earth score here. And so that, that way we can tell how many of each item you have in your inventory. It also clears out those items as it's counting them. Um, so if I say three, uh, six, seven, six, seven, and I go ahead and shoot this thing, if we look down real quick, we'll see um, two of the earth ones blinked on and two of the water ones blinked on. And these are water, clears out water, and sets your water score. And so that's what, how we count uh, how, many, how many items you've queued up of each kind. And then over here, we this is the stuff that uh, actually executes the spell. And so uh, when it's detected that you have you know two fire and two air, then it's going to cast uh, the spell, which is basically the first spell, which is spell equals one. And uh, it's going to tell you that you've cast fireball. And as soon as the spell has finished casting, which is when the snowball goes away, it's going to summon Prime TNT and then teleport oops, teleport the Prime TNT to a Wither Skull. Uh, okay, what's going on with this Wither Skull? So basically, the way this works, uh, this uses something Wubby came up with, and I've linked it in the video description. Uh, when you throw a snowball or fire an arrow or throw a splash potion, uh, what happens is we summon a... Oops, that's not the right one. We summon a Wither Skull with no direction. And uh, and so it's just going to sit still, and then we're constantly teleporting that Wither Skull to the you know to an arrow or to a throne potion or to uh, a snowball, and so that Wither Skull sort of is a marker for where that snowball is, and then when the snowball disappears, uh, the Wither Skull stays at the last known position of the snowball, and so when we summon that Prime TNT and teleport it to the Wither Skull, it's going to be wherever the, the the snowball landed. So that was an awesome invention by Webby. Go check out the video if you want to see how he did it. Um, yeah, that's kind of how it works. It's uh, it's quite complicated and pretty technical. I've included a schematic of this thing, and so you can download this and play around with it. Uh, you may have to restart the clocks here, the redstone clocks, if you import the schematic. But everything else should work, I think, <laughs> uh, if you just you know put the schematic somewhere in your world. Uh, so yeah, pretty cool stuff. I really like what's possible with the snapshot. That's about it. Thanks for watching.